Oh yeah, that will hold right there and it won't fall out. And it'll also go in this one, but it's a little bit tighter for some weird reason. Hello Internet, I'm Guy. This is my wood lathe, and today I'm going to be making a very small improvement to it, both for myself and for my friend John, who has a nearly identical machine with a few very minor differences. This is a two horsepower machine, his is a three, but the difference is that there's a locking pin that you need to use to lock the spindle so that you can take a chuck and screw it on to the lathe like that. This pin, I don't like it very much. Um, it's just awkward to use. It has a threaded end that can go into a threaded hole here. So that will thread in and hold very securely once it's all the way in. There's a slight taper on the end of this uh, bolt, if you will, and that locks in the, the chuck really nicely. Whereas um, if you just use the pin and push it in, it's a little bit sloppy. So if I drop that in like that, you can see it's, it's a little sloppy. So what I want to do is make a nicer version of this. And one of the things that's different between my machine and John's is that his pin goes in at a slight angle from a low angle, and it tends to fall out. If he just wants to hold something for a brief while um, to secure something, then it'll just drop right out. So the other thing I'm going to do is try and put a magnet in the end here so that it'll hold itself up. So here's the plan. I've measured this part here, which is the spindle that John removed from his lathe because it was damaged. I'm using that to measure the diameter of the pin that is necessary. And the pin on the original machine tool that came with the lathe is a little undersized. So I'm going to make a bigger pin here that will fit better. So I'm drawing that out right here. Uh, this will be 0 0.230. And then the rest of the body will fit very nicely into the larger hole in the body of the lathe. So that's 0.395. And I'm also going to extend this deeper because this pin right here doesn't bottom out in there. And I want it to because if I insert a little tiny magnet, and I have this tiny little magnet here, which is eighth by eighth, it will get right in the bottom here and bottom out and hold this, hopefully, into the uh, spindle here. So what I'm going to do is use uh, some mild steel and some brass. So the mild steel is going to go about this far and then brass for a nice knurled handle. So it's going to come out quite a way, so it'll be a nice long handle that'll be attractive. So let's get it on the lathe. Okay, let's check that dimension, see what I've got here. 396, okay, I can deal with that. So I've zeroed my cross slide here, and I've also set the limit switches for my motor drive, so I can go all the way up to this spot right here, and then go back and have an automatic stop over here. So now I can just drive with the motor back and forth until I get where I want to be. I'm going to put my chip catcher on the top. This is a magnetic chip catcher that I made a while ago, and that will keep the chips, chips off the uh, bed. So here we go. So I'm going to go in 10 thou passes from now on, and fire it up. Okay, let's check and see how we're doing here. Shooting for 0.230, and I got it. Okay.
So now I'm going to just chamfer the edges here a little bit so this will guide in better. And by the way, I'll put a link into the description for this lathe file, which I really like. So I'm going to test fit the spindle to make sure it fits. And yes, it does. There's a little wiggle room, which is what I need. But it's also um, not quite bottoming out. So if I can put a magnet in the end here, that will hit the bottom of this hole and hold it in, hopefully. I found a slightly larger magnet in my collection. So this will go in that far, embedded in. And it's exactly 1 8 of an inch. So I can just drill an eighth inch hole in here, set it in there, leave it a little bit proud so that it'll hit the bottom of the hole inside of there. So that's the next step. So starting with a centering drill here, shoot a little lube in there. And here we go. Okay. Okay, I've got a little piece of tape there to give me a sense of how deep to go. And now I'm going to go for it. Heck, it pulled the tape away. All right, I'm gonna have to test again. So here's the magnet. And now I'm gonna have to see how deep I've got to go. Let's see, I'm gonna put a, maybe a smaller drill bit in that hole. Grab a smaller one, and then I can kind of eyeball my depth. So that's to that deep. Oh, yes, I have overshot. Okay, I'm going to blow out the inside. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then put some Loctite 638 on the magnet, which is on the end of my drill bit here. So let's see, just a little dollop. See if I can twirl that in there. Oh gosh, it's not lining up easily. Okay, come on. I know you want to go in there. There we go. All right, I'm going to leave that. Oops, it's stuck all the way in. Uh, that's not what I wanted at all. I want you to stay out. Hmm. Okay. Less than optimal. I've got to come up with another way to get that held in there then. Well, it turns out I have some extra little teeny tiny magnets. You can see them right there. So I'm going to add uh, three of those onto the bottom of my regular magnet that I was trying to get in there. All right, so this is the plan now. See if I can put all of those in there with a little bit of Loctite. All right, that should be plenty. Let's see if this is going to bottom out. There we go. Okay, now I've got too much. One step at a time here. Okay, taking one more off. Maybe two more. Let's see how that works. Go on in there. That is a little shy of the surface, but I think I can live with that. Okay, so now I'm going to part this off right about there. This is just an approximate dimension. This part penetrates into the lathe body about this much, and then I'm going to add on some brass over here. So here we go. Okay, I've got this flipped over, and now what I'm going to do is drill a hole to tap in this 1032 bolt that will hold the brass handle onto here. So that's the next step. Bring in the drill. Right. A little cutting fluid, and here we go. Mm. 
Ja. Okay, a 1032 tamp drill is a number 18, so put some lube on that, drill that one out. That's plenty. And a quick chamfer. That looks good. And a 1032 tap. Going in by hand, basically. And that bottomed out. Okay, so the 1032 bolt fits in there pretty nicely. So now I need to establish the length of the brass handle that I'm going to put on here. And this is going to be, the cap is going to be recessed into the end there. So I'm going to measure this out and see what we've got here. That is, well, 1.47. Do I want to call it 1.5? Yeah, roughly 1.5 is going to be fine. Okay, so going to mark off 1.5 inches, roughly. That's good enough. So now I need to drill all the way through here for the clearance for that bolt. There was an original hole on the end there, but I want to make sure I'm concentric. So I'm going to use a centering bit here to just sneak up on that hole and make sure it's concentric. That should be good. So this is my number nine clearance drill bit, and I'm going to go out to the blue tape here, which is very firmly attached to the shank so I don't see it sliding off like I have earlier. Lube this up, and here we go. Oh, actually, I just realized I don't really need to lubricate brass. It's just a habit I got into. Brass is such a friendly material. Okay, I want to make sure I drilled all the way through there, so I'm going to put my caliper in there, set that, and let's see what I've got. So, yes, that is just a bit, oh, here we go, that's quite a bit beyond, so 1.67, excellent. All right, now I'm going to bring in a fractional drill so I can bury the head into the end here. One of the drawbacks of a very sharp drill bit is it tends to catch on brass. I should have used my cheap abandoned Chinese drill, but now I'm in. Okay, let's just go a little bit more. Let go very gently, just easing into the cut. Just a little bit. If I go fast, it'll catch. I want it to be just a little bit below the top surface there, so yeah, maybe a little bit more. Now, just a quick chamfer to clean up that whole edge there a little bit. That looks good. So now I'm just going to round over this edge, starting with a fairly coarse file here. Okay, so now with my nice lathe file. Just sweeten that out and make it look pretty. Okay, now my favorite tool, the knurling tool. Start this a little wide there. I'm going to start it right about there. Tighten this up a little bit. And I'm going to get some 30 weight oil on the bearings. So, some in right here and some right here. Make sure it's nice and slippery. Okay, I'm going to run it really slowly. A little slower than that. There we go. Tighten it down a little bit. You can hear the lathe loading down. All right, now I'm just going to drive it along. Yeah. 
yeah, it's not a perfect neural, but it's fine for the job here. It's not nice little diamonds, it's crisscrossed, but it's fine. I'll clean off the rest of that. I've got this little round nose cutter. I'm just going to delineate the edge of the knurling here and here just to make it look pretty. I just set my DRO to that depth so that I know how far in to go over here. Do another one right about there. further over. Okay. Right about there. Okay, I've got the parting tool set up, and I've got my depth pretty much where I want it. So let's uh, go right in there and part that sucker off. Oh, not that fast. Okay. Because parting is such sweet sorrow. Yes, that's just what I wanted. Okay, flipping it around, I'm going to now have to make a small chamfer there to match the handle to the actual part here. Oh, spot on. Okay, just clean that up a little bit and we are good to go. Okay, I've got it flipped around in the chuck so I can hold it, and I'm going to put my 1032 bolt all the way through here, and screw that puppy in there. Nice and tight. All right, let's release that from the chuck. And here we have the tool finished, hopefully. I'm going to test fit it on the lathe. So here we are on the wood lathe, and as you can see, there are all these little holes in here that index. So if I drop this in, and I hear it is finished, drop it in there, and it'll plop right in there and lock that shaft completely so I can spin on a chuck or, or a faceplate, whatever I need to do to put parts on here, and then I can pull it right out again. So I'm pretty pleased with this. I think it's going to work out just fine. Now I have to take it over to my friend John's uh, lathe and make sure it fits his because there are slight differences in the proportions and dimensions on the two machines because they're slightly different models. Well, it didn't quite work out on John's lathe because the holes in the spindle here on his machine are just a little bit offset. So when I tried to put this in to the hole there, it just it wiggled around and didn't quite penetrate. So what I'm going to do here is machine this down to this diameter, the, the hole clearance diameter, because he has several other holes. He has one up here, one here, and one down here that have the threaded holes. So let's see if that's going to help him out. Okay, so I have a diameter here of 0.390, and I'm going to take it down to 0.263 to go into the threaded hole in the lathe. That means by calculation I have to take off 0.063. So I've also set this depth here to the depth of the penetration into the wall of the lathe. So I'm going to start by making a little mark here and then working my way back and forth here to reduce this down by 0.063. Oh, that's not very centered, is it? Well, I guess that doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. Huh, well, I'm just going to have to make that work. Well, here I am on John's lathe, having turned this down, and let's see. Oh yeah, 
that will hold right there and it won't fall out and it'll also go in this one but it's a little bit tighter for some weird reason but nonetheless it'll wedge right in there and it won't fall out which is one of the critical things that John didn't want it to do because there's also another hole down here that one can use but then that will just work its way out so I am going to call this problem solved I hope John likes it he's off having lunch right now but I'll leave that there for him. So as they say in the cooking shows, I made another one just for me. And it drops in there just perfectly. Very little play, which is just what you want. You want a little bit of wiggle room so that it'll drop in fairly easily once you hit the hole. But uh, this one came out pretty nice. I put some little decorations right here on this one. And this one does go in the full-sized hole rather than the threaded hole here. And also there is a tiny magnet in here and it, it sticks a little bit here and it has a, just a tiny bit of stiction, just a little bit right there to help it hold. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this project and I think John is too.